Hello guys, in this video I will be doing some work on this uh, Lenovo E 530C. Basically I got uh, this really cheap from uh, eBay. It was missing a few parts, hard drive, memory and uh, adapter. I uh, got those and another thing, let me just show you. It was uh, pretty badly damaged in this corner. You can see the plastic is just flapping around. So yeah, I have to fix that. Uh, first I thought that uh, I don't have to buy a new case, a button case that I already bought. Uh, but uh, yeah, the damage is way too extensive to be repaired without a new bottom part. Basically, I've done some repairs on other uh, Len Lenovo's uh, in corners like this, but this is way too bad. And I really think it's a design problem on Lenovo's. Uh, the corner is where the cooler is is way too thin. Let me just show you. Basically, you only have this. This is the whole structure, so uh, yeah, you can see lots of holes, this cracks in time by opening the hinge and eventually it will fall down. So yeah, this is bad design in my opinion. And uh, this is, I don't know, second, third Lenovo with this problem that I've seen. So it's clearly something wrong. So yeah, at this point I'm just going to start uh, taking everything apart until I can change this uh, bottom part of the case, but uh, yeah, I pretty much think that I will tear this whole laptop uh, apart before being able to change this. So yeah, I'm trying to do the least amount of uh, uh, teardown necessary, but uh, we will see. And of course I have no idea if the battery is actually working or not. That's another thing, but it was pretty cheap, so yeah, we will see about that. Another thing that I forgot to tell you, when buying a laptop like this, uh, make sure you test it before doing any work on it. Basically I've tested it about uh, two weeks ago when I got it, and it is uh, running normally. Except for this, it doesn't seem to have any other problems. Because if you start uh, taking it apart and then re uh, when you put it back together you realize it's not working. You can go on eBay and tell the person that sold it to you that uh, he basically sold you a non-working laptop. Because he will say that you damaged it somehow. So yeah, test it before working on it. And I've already done that uh, and it's okay. I'm not going to go through the whole teardown process because this is the first time when I'm opening this type of laptop, this exact model. So I'm not really sure where it has all the screws, but I will be going through this process when I put it back together. And just um, something that could help you, try to keep all the screws in the correct holes. For example, well, when you take this and put it aside, keep the screws in the correct holes so you do not uh, put uh, in other holes uh, because um, not all of them are the same length so you could be doing damage on this one it's really easy because they don't fall apart they have this uh, I don't know retaining ring so it's quite easy and uh, yeah let's continue and another thing that could help you uh, take lots of pictures with your mobile phone or camera, anything uh, that will uh, basically help you when putting it back together. For example, you can see how the cables are uh, routed uh, and it, it is way easier if you have uh, tons of pictures because not all the time you remember, okay, this cable has to go to here, to here, to here, yeah. You could try to go the other way, then you realize, wait, it's incorrect and yeah, it will save you a lot of time if you have uh, tons of pictures. 
or you could search on YouTube for videos uh, for your specific uh, laptop. Another thing, take out the battery as soon as you can and try to put it back together in the same day because then the information will be fresh in your memory and it's easier to, to put it back together. Somebody has been inside this laptop before and as you can see it did an extremely crap job. The worst job that I've seen in my life uh, on a CPU. The amount of thermal paste is unbelievable. A quarter of this would be too much. This is, I don't know, I, have any, I don't have any boards. And as you can see, the thermal pad, pad uh, is also destroyed. I have no clue how he managed to do this. So probably I have to search for a new thermal pad and apply new thermal paste. So yeah, this is not really funny. I was planning not to remove this, but now I'm really glad that I actually remo removed it. This is the point where it is not funny anymore. I just realized this thing had a magnesium frame. Basically you can see it's broken here. A part of it uh, fall down from here somewhere. Probably like this. So yeah. This is going to require way more work than I expected it. And as you can see it is thin as hell. It, if it would have been just a little bit thicker, probably the, this problem would not exist now. So, as always, they make this stuff as thin as possible, so it barely manages uh, to work when you are using it correctly, and in time it will crack and do this sort of uh, crap, and you have to buy a new one. So, yeah. I really hate this. Don't make a bloody thin laptop if you cannot make it strong enough to last for, I don't know, 10 years. They are used to people buying new laptops every two years or something like that, but not everybody can do that, so yeah, kind of sucks. Well, crap. All of this has to come out and be moved on to the new bottom part. So yeah, a quick fix, no way. This is a complete teardown apart from the display itself, but hinges, everything, everything comes out. Wasn't planning on this, but yeah, I gotta do it. I'm gonna go ghetto a little bit and film with the camera in my hand because otherwise this will take too much time. I've started uh, moving components from uh, the original case to the new one. First I moved this uh, board. Basically it only has one screw. You undo that, undo the flat flex, take it out and put it into the new one, do the screw and wait with the flat flex connector open. Then I undo two screws on one speaker, on the other, and then pull very uh, carefully but strongly on this uh, connector from here on the motherboard because it's pretty stuck. It will come out pretty hard. And these are the tiny speakers. Pretty nice. And I'm going to just uh, place it uh, back into its position. Hopefully it actually wants to of feeds. Yeah, not, not quite easy with one hand, but... Okay, it has little uh, rubber grommets. Ah, I'm so going to regret working on this laptop and filming at the same time. Filming actually under the table because this one doesn't seem to go into its position.
and the rubber grommets are out, of course, why not? Okay, I'm going to stop filming. It's pretty hard to put the grommets in at the same time as filming, so yeah, we basically okay. found the trick. There's always a trick with stuff like this. You basically put just one in, as it should be, and then rotate it, and the other one goes in. Yeah, and that's that. But sadly, you learn these tricks only for the second, third time you will open it. On the first one, you have no idea. Next, I'm going to put these four uh, flat uh, screws in. Next, the little network board. It has only one screw, one flat flex, and underneath uh, the BIOS battery. Maybe you can see it here. Basically, uh, I didn't do it in position yet, it's flapping around in the breeze right there. When I will turn this around, then I will put it in position. And uh, yeah. Next I will take out this uh, charging port and probably I will take it out with the whole board. Of course after taking uh, out even the display uh, cable. So let's see. Uh, hopefully I can do this all in one. Not sure. Nope. I was wrong. There was another small board. The one for the optical drive. It has just one screw here. Do not undo the black ones. They are just for the connector. The charger port is in. Uh, I had to take out this port again because the cable... cable <laughs> cable sorry is underneath it i could have tried to put it uh, underneath but uh, better to take it out again it has only one screw and one clip and then route the cable like you see here basically to this area and then yeah just popped up the motherboard will uh, be over it in the end if i could actually put it back again something like that so yeah next the board will go in not funny because I have to be careful of lots of things but uh, yeah let's do it actually no because this is under the motherboard in this corner so I have to fix this uh, magnesium uh, hinge part part of the hinge actually no the hinge just bolts onto it this was basically put in here to strengthen this uh, corner yeah it didn't do a good job did it so I'm going to try and uh, put it all back together somehow you can see it's in too many pieces at the moment so yeah this will be really fun the puzzle is back together in position I've put it back together with this type of glue because it stays where you put it it's a gel but uh, do not think that this glue is strong enough to to keep this together in place come on focus on it You can see it there, there in the middle of the picture, and there at the, the connection, at the joint. So yeah, this was basically broken into three pieces. And at this point I'm waiting for this gel to dry up, and if you've uh, watched my other repair videos, you know what's coming ne next. I'm going to use some cloth with uh, the, the water-like type of super glue to make something similar to, I don't know, carbon fiber, something like that. Basically, it's, it is extremely strong when you mix uh, super glue with cloth. Uh, the super glue is brittle by itself, but if you put it onto the cloth, 
it's way 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 stronger so this is what I'm going to use but I have to make sure that I don't put uh, that mix uh, somewhere where uh, another thing has to attach to this because then there is no no room so yeah I have to be very careful when I, where I can use that mix but hopefully this will be strong like new okay the first uh, super glue the gel one is uh, dry now I've cut a little bit of cloth put it in the position where I want it this is uh, liquid form super glue it is uh, toxic so use this just in a well 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 ventilated area be careful what you are doing and uh, yeah let me see if I can do this on video just a little bit so you can see what I'm basically doing you have to make sure all of this is uh, is wet and then basically push it down onto the metal this will create a really strong reaction and uh, it will bond uh, this to the metal very 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 well and it will be really strong so I'm going to do this off video because I want to do it uh, really good okay perfectly applied it should uh, remain uh, like this uh, like uh, glass reflective that means uh, the cloth is uh, full of super glue and again make sure you don't put this uh, in areas where uh, everything is really really tight and uh, it does not allow even for this increase in thickness in this area the cooler resides and uh, yeah I can bend that just a little bit if needed no problem there but I don't think it's needed for this thickness it's not, not that uh, tight so yeah at this point I'm going to try and do the other uh, areas and I'll get back to you when this is all finished waiting for the glue to dry it's looking really really good and with some of these uh, tampons I don't know how to call them uh, woman use them to take off makeup basically you can fix something like this this mounting point was ripped off I put some glue underneath it put it in place and then put uh, this around it and put super glue on it you cannot use cloth in this situation because you cannot uh, make it go around it uh, very easily so it's way better to use this also this was uh, ripped off the corner maybe you can see you should be able to see now I glue it in place I unbent it hit it up and unbent it because it was badly bent and yeah now I'm waiting for the glue to, to dry and all should be good I've also used uh, this method a few times and it has never failed so hopefully this time will also work good just so you understand how strong this cloth with super glue is listen to the noise it makes it's basically like reinforced glass or <laughs> I don't know how to call it but it's really really strong so hopefully this will never create uh, any more problems now let's put this thing back together because it took a hell of, a lot of time to to do this this is where the power cable has to arrive I've put it wrong through here first this is the correct place and also this is the correct position for the hinge the motherboard is in let me try and remember where I put some screws one here you can see the arrow the white one above it one in this corner one here one here and one there and those are all the screws or of them are uh, silver no black ones here uh, flex cable from here to here flex cable oh, sorry I can't talk I'm a little bit tired flex cable here uh, cable for the speakers 
flex from here to here on the back uh, the power cable of course i need to route the cables for the wireless and display but uh, that is next turn it around to plug in the power wire and to stack the battery in the correct position although i can't actually remember what the correct position means but i will do something weird like this and hopefully it is okay if i could actually manage to force it to go where i want it So the battery is in position now. Don't really know if this is the original position, but yeah, things are going okay. Uh, I put the display in place. Two black screws here, two black ones there. I've uh, put some silicone grease on the hinges. I don't want them to get stuck and break something again. Uh, Replace the black tape. Uh, that holds this display cable in place and uh, yeah, I have to route these two cables now and all seems good, plugged in the display it really seems pretty good cables routed I decided to move, move the black Wi-Fi cable or one is, it, one is Bluetooth, one is Wi-Fi, not really sure but the black one I decided to route it uh, right through here and not to its original channel here because this is um, occupied a little bit by the cloth with super glue and I don't want to squeeze anything in there it's better to put it here hopefully it will not uh, end up being a problem the gray one it's routed through its normal uh, place and let me just turn this around they both arrive the black one through here here arrives here and the gray one like that so yeah pretty good so far I've put the Wi-Fi card black, uh, back in with a tiny black screw because uh, with the cables already routed every time I would let this laptop uh, stay down it would stay on these uh, connectors and I didn't really want that so it's better everything is in place and uh, nothing is out I've just put the top uh, back on and put uh, in two screws uh, in the back in this corner and two in the back in this corner and you can see there uh, the screws from the back side that I have to put in afterwards and now I just have about three screws I think one here one here and one here to put on this side and uh, three cables to put in and that's about that I was wrong, the screws go here, here and here, not there. The keyboard is in, there are two flat flexes, the thin white one and the black uh, or brown thick one or white one. And basically to put the keyboard in you have to slide it in the top part but most likely I will be unable to do it with one hand it's oh, actually it went in then uh, you push it down in the lower part and make sure uh, all of this go under when you slide it back down but with one hand I am unable to do that some screws here, 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 here and here all of them are long ones and of course the four ones uh, that I already put in before and we will have three tiny ones here those over there and laying them down uh, in the pattern that they go back uh, it's really really helpful the last screws are in one here very short one one here one here long long and long Next, the cooling part, of course the CPU after I clean it. 
CPU and heat sink uh, clean. Use some alcohol to do that. And I'm going to put the CPU in and put some cool laboratory liquid ultra on it. Because that is the best thermal paste for direct dye application and it works with copper uh, heat sinks. So it's perfect. Do not use that uh, on aluminum heat sinks, it will destroy them. So yeah, let's do this and uh, put very very little on that because it's conductive. And of course I'm going to try and uh, straighten this just a little bit because uh, it's a little bit bent. Straighten this out as best as I could. And just a quick tip, when you have fins like this that are bent and uh, aluminum is showing, they are not uh, anodized black anymore, uh, use a marker. Because you will be able to send them to the grill, so you don't want to see shiny aluminum. The thermal paste is applied. I've managed to repair uh, this uh, heat pad. It seems it is something that basically glues itself together, so I'm going to reuse it. I've already tested uh, uh, this uh, heat sink. I couldn't find the right uh, name. And uh, it fits perfectly even with this uh, strengthening in. So, yeah, let's do this. The cooler is in. The pad uh, got squished, that means it is working. Put the memory in, in the lowest uh, slot, so upgrade is easy. Put the caddy on the hard drive. Two screws on uh, either side. Basically, let me try and put it in, in place on video, see if it works. Okay, it's in place. I have to put two screws in here and then start putting the covers back and the uh, battery. No luck this time, I don't have any screws. I have this uh, dimension but they are longer and I have shorter but they are thicker. So yeah, I'm just going to put uh, some sponge, uh, sticky sponge on this to uh, keep it in position and I'm going to take it out and basically put some double sided tape in this end and I will do something like this slide it in without pushing on the tape then it rests on the tape this pushes it down and it is glued in place, it will not move like this. So, yeah, that's about that. If I find any screws, I will put them in and take this out, but I don't think I, I will find. Optical drive is next, it just slides in, and we have to put one single screw here. And I've prepared it. Do not over tighten screws on laptops, it's almost as bad as not tightening them enough, you can crack the plastic. Uh, yeah, next the cover. Maybe I can do this with one hand. Who knows? Maybe not. Every laptop has a way of putting on this cover it should come come from one side the other. Eh, who knows? Just push on it slowly and see where it clips into place. It seems it doesn't like some, something in this area, so I will investigate that in a moment. It seems it has a clip right underneath this area, and I just had to push on it. Now let's. Uh, Plug in the battery, uh, latch it, and turn it around, plug in the power and see if it boots. Almost ready for powering on. We have power, nothing blew up. These uh, were not covered, 
where basically the rubber that you can see there in the corner was missing on these top uh, two screws so I've cut uh, some of that black um, sponge and put there and the nipple is missing so again I've cut some of the black sponge and hopefully this will be the last thing that I need to do this will not be really usable will it will be just uh, covered because most likely they will not use this uh, nipple mostly people from the early days of IBM are used to these things and for the rest is uh, almost useless so yeah let's give it a power on And that was a really quick shutdown. Yeah, I know why it was a quick shutdown. Because we have to enter setup. Because we removed the motherboard and the battery. So this seems to be working. And next I'm going to put Windows 8 on it. And upgrade it to Windows 10 so uh, we have uh, a valid Windows 10 uh, install and that's about that so let's do this installed Windows 8 it uh, found the code uh, by itself in the BIOS the serial key for Windows 8 and now I'm upgrading to Windows 10 and yeah Hopefully it will be also activated automatically. And it's finished. Windows 10 activated. Uh, it basically found all the drivers by itself. So no problems there. I really like this about Windows 10. It uh, kind of finds drivers way easier at least on newer pcs on older ones sometimes you cannot find the all drivers so yeah but the problem is this display has some spots in this area and uh, yeah it's not dirt it's inside the panel so probably i could try to open up the panel but honestly i don't think it's worth it so something happened to this at one point or another, maybe even when uh, uh, it got uh, damaged the corner. Probably a fall or something, or something was caught between the display and that corner. I have no idea, but yeah. So that's that. Anyway, this works really, really good. It's a really nice laptop. Battery seems to be working. It's charging now. So, yeah, what can I say? Thank you guys for watching. Sadly, I don't really have enough light for uh, filming here, but I will take care of that, that when I put a LED panel there. So, yeah, hopefully other videos will be better. Let me just try and turn the brightness down a little bit. Maybe it helps. Yeah. So, again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, Give this video a like if you found it uh, enjoyable or useful. Check out my other videos, subscribe and see you again next time. Bye.